impact of alcohol on blood sugar is so interesting and nuanced. So my name is Karen Kennedy. I'm a functional nutritionist specializing in helping people hack their blood sugar. My dog's going a bit nuts barking at the neighbor's cows. That's what he does. So this is a slightly longer video because there's some interesting nuance about this that I want you to understand because some of the research can be a little confusing, or it was to me. I started researching alcohol and blood sugar a couple of months ago because I put so many of my clients on continuous glucose monitors, my programs, and I was seeing such interesting things. I had a couple of clients on their own, A, B test, drinking alcohol with their evening meals, and they saw what looked like really beneficial effects of moderate amounts of alcohol taken with dinner and instead of having elevated blood sugar overnight, they had low and level blood sugar overnight. It, it looked like alcohol was like the best blood sugar medication known to man. And then I had other people, and this was more typical, where when I saw their blood sugar being really erratic overnight and lots of hypoglycemic episodes, I would always ask, did you drink alcohol? And they're like, yeah. And so... I had a hard time telling those people who AB tested it and found it helped. I had a hard time saying, maybe cut out that alcohol in the evening and find something else because, you know, the evidence was there. It was helping their blood sugar. So I started researching this and this is why things get really complex when you look at the research with alcohol. First and foremost, we have mountains of epidemiological data that say moderate alcohol consumption is associated with improved cardiovascular disease risk, meaning less risk for cardiovascular disease and better health, da-da-da-da-da, Mediterranean diet, red wine, blah de blah So that's epidemiological. And, and then you'll, you might see some studies that say alcohol makes, um, improves insulin response, alcohol inhibits insulin response, alcohol does this, alcohol does that, and it's, I found it really confusing. But I just published an article, a blog post about this, trying to tease this out. And this is why I think you're going to notice a lot of different answers and confusion and why it impacts people so differently. One is that if you do an in vitro study, which means you take cells out of a, the body, a human, a mouse, or a rat, put them in a Petri dish, and then expose them to alcohol, like liver cells or whatnot, muscle cells, they're going to do one thing. But then when you, when a whole organism drinks alcohol, that alcohol interacts with things in the gut, like gut peptides, such as GLP-1, which it does. And it tells, that it goes through that system and it has a different effect. So you're, you're going to see different impacts of alcohol depending on how it, how it enters the body, how it hits the cells. And it's really complex. So I break this down in the article but I'll share it with you here a little bit as well. One, alcohol does inhibit gluconeogenesis glycolysis in the liver, which means that the liver's not gonna be putting out as much glucose. So you'll notice that there's drugs that do this too, like metformin, it'll inhibit those as well, which is why you'll see it lowering at overnight glucose levels. So why not just have like bourbon or a glass of wine instead of metformin. This is what I was having a hard time with, um, answering my clients with authority. I had no authority. So it does that, but it also impacts other things. So I talked about that GLP-1, and you might have heard of that, Con, I know what that GLP-1 is, and it's, a, it's one of the gut peptides, and it's the one that is involved in the pathway that Ozempic and Wegovy uses, you know, those like miracle weight loss drugs, and they do work. Well, alcohol does the opposite of what they do. It's like the anti-Ozempic, the anti-weight loss drug. So it kind of stimulates appetite and, um, and it impacts insulin production in a negative way. And so it has that impact. You might've noticed when you have a few beers, you're a little more peckish, you snack, you have, um, it's hard to control your food intake maybe. So it has that. 
And then in the article, I also discuss the impact of alcohol on the polyol pathway, which is involved, it, which gets the body to make fructose and make uric acid, which stimulates what, what Richard Johnson in his book, Nature Wants Us to Be Fat. So he's not just an author. He actually runs, I think, a lab at UC Boulder studying this um, fructose and uric acid. Um, the polyol pathway and uric acid stimulate a survival switch that triggers our body to store fat, a little more insulin resistance, the foraging response where we're going in the kitchen and looking for food. Um, so it sends us into that metabolic pathway that is kind of unfavorable for our metabolic health. So you see how alcohol impacts a lot of different pathways. So it's complex and it's confusing. I was confused. It took me a long time to go through these. And frankly, I'm not sure I have a 100% a conclusion on that. But I leaned heavily on some papers. I leaned heavily on Richard Johnson's work. And you can see my conclusions in my paper is that yeah, alcohol in moderation is fine, but they, we give specifics as to what moderation might be. Because, man, I see a lot of people saying, I just drink moderate amounts of alcohol, very Mediterranean diet, but it definitely creeps up. And so go ahead and read the article. It has some references in there that you might be interested in. Um, and it gives some guidelines on, on how to enjoy alcohol if you'd like it and mitigate the effects, right? So it's not about eliminating it altogether. It's about knowing the negative impacts and how you can use it in your diet to enjoy it during the holidays and whatnot with fewer negative side effects. So I hope you find it interesting. Let me know in the comments what you think.